Well, if you thought 2020 couldn't get any worse, they made a sequel to the movie after. You know, the Citizen Kane of movies that make you feel like maybe the dinosaurs had it all figured out. Now, to be fair, the movie was more or less just a run-of-the-mill teen romance story of a good girl who falls in love with a bad boy because he wears black, listens to a lot of Paramore and Simple Plan, and hasn't matured since, like, seventh grade. How exciting. But all the same, like I said, just last week, the sequel no one asked for but somehow we all deserve came out called After We Collided. So... Let's take a walk. But before that, really quick, this video is brought to you by Surfshark VPN. Now, it's 2020 and pretty much everyone knows what a VPN is. It protects you when you're on the internet, it stops your IP address from being hacked and your personal data getting exposed. I mean, everybody needs one. But Surfshark VPN goes above and beyond your typical VPN. You can use it on as many devices as you want with just one subscription. They also offer HackLock ID protection that checks to see if your personal data has been leaked anywhere, like usernames, passwords, that kind of thing. So you can stay one step ahead. They also offer a service called Block Line Search, which is a completely private and organic search engine free from data tracking and overreaching algorithms. And get this, you can sign up to Surfshark VPN today by going to surfshark.deals slash Alex Myers and use the promo code Alex Myers to get 83% off the regular price when you sign up for a two-year subscription. That means you get premium VPN services and a guaranteed peace of mind using any device or all of them at the same time, plus three extra months for free. So if you don't have a VPN, then you really need to sign up. But even if you already have one, go to Surfshark Surfshark.deal slash Alex Myers and use the promo code Alex Myers to give Surfshark a try. Okay, back to the show. The movie starts out with a little recap of what happened in the first movie, sort of, kinda, courtesy of our old friend Hardin. The entire world is a collection of memoranda that she did exist and that I have lost her. Whatever our souls are made of, hers and mine are the same. A rather pretentious way to open our story. You think? Anyway, like I said, he goes on to summarize the first movie. It's a story of a young girl exploring her independence. She meets a dashingly handsome young man who sweeps her off her feet, even though he represents everything she detests, and is ultimately betrayed by him when it feels as though all is lost. The two reunite, a story you've heard before. Only difference is, this isn't that story. Okay, are we seriously doing this right now? You're telling me the entire ending of the first movie didn't even happen? It's all just a dream Harden's having in his car? I didn't sit through that whole first movie just so you could be like, ha, look at you getting all emotionally invested in something that I just now decided never actually happened. Ha <laughs> ha, what a dumb dumb. All the same, sticking to his brand, Harden broods for a while and then he gets the ugliest tattoo I've ever seen. Like, what, what even is this? Anyway, then we flash sideways over to Tessa, who's starting her first day as the new intern for Vance Publishing, because as you may recall, she's all like, quirky and relatable because she reads books, which no other girl does apparently. Tessa Young, single-handedly keeping Barnes & Noble in business. Thank you. Sorry. Excuse me, sir, can you hold the elevator, please? Halfway. Oh my goodness, is that Dylan Sprouse? He's alive? He's been alive this whole time? Well, what am I supposed to do with all this stuff now? You know what? I don't even need to watch the rest of this movie, okay? Rotten Tomatoes score 100%. Consensus, Dylan Sprouse is in this movie. Masterpiece. Anyway, so like I said, this is Tessa's first day at her new internship, and just like every other movie and TV show like this, her boss is some tough-as-nails Miranda Priestly wannabe guy. This might not be the best time for introductions. Why don't I show you your office? I apologize for the mess. We've been short on interns lately, and we're a bit backlogged. That seems crazy to me. People I know would kill for an internship here. I know, it's just that Vance has this small problem with firing them after a day. You know, the kind of boss that doesn't exist and no one would ever work for anyway. So thanks to the magic of Hollywood, Tessa gets roped into attending some big fancy party thing in the city on her second day of work because, you know, that's totally what being an adult is really like all the time. Now, long story short, she ends up having a little too much funky potato juice and starts believing that consequences don't exist. And then she's like, you know what time it is? It's time to pull out my phone and make some bad decisions because I'm 19 and you're watching Disney Channel. <laughs> Tessa? Hi, I just, uh, I just wanted to inform you that I look hot and you're missing it. <laughs> yeah, okay, Tessa, I don't know. Between you and me, you kind of just look like that thing you get in Breath of the Wild after you find all the Korok seeds. So Harden gets upset because Tessa's having fun without him. How dare. So he goes to find her because I guess she's still sharing her location with him, which is a real smart thing to do with your alcoholic, extremely volatile ex-boyfriend. Anyway, so then Harden barges into Tessa's hotel room and you'll never guess what he sees. Are you trying to get me kicked out of this place? 
Yeah, come on in, why don't you? Hey. Hey, honey, good to see you, hi. Yeah, that's me. You're probably wondering how I got here. Turns out what happened was Tessa and Dylan Sprouse, AKA Trevor, were talking about a bunch of nerdy book stuff or whatever. So, Tessa. Mm. Tessa Young. Mm -hmm. Why the hell are you in publishing? Well, I love to read. That makes sense. What's your favorite book? It's The Principles of Economics by Alfred Marshall. Well, I do declare, go and get me a tall glass of sweet tea there, Jebediah. It's getting all hot and steamy in here. And then Tessa threw something at him, which made him spill his wine all over himself, hence this scene. Now, it turns out Trevor and Harden know each other because Harden used to work at Vance like a year ago or something, and he and Trevor were like friends or whatever, and we never really learned exactly what happened, but now they just kind of hate each other. How do you two know each other? Harden worked at Vance last year. He did? Yeah, same position as you, actually. Kind of a sad story, we were best of friends and then we became lovers and then I found a red hair on my pillow. Hilarious. And so wouldn't you know, Tessa somehow finds herself wrapped up in a love triangle between Harry Styles and Dylan Sprouse of all people. Did I mention this is a Wattpad movie? So for the next little while, we basically just get a bunch of scenes of Trevor being all smart and resourceful and clever and emotionally balanced and then Hardin's just kind of like... <laughs> One day, Tessa goes back to Harden and her's old apartment from the first movie to pick up some things she left there because you know how like girls always just leave stuff and then after you break up it's like, hey so sorry to call you out of the blue but like, are you gonna come get all your Polly Pocket stuff? What about all these bobby pins I found in my house? Also can I get at least like one of my sweatshirts back? But while she's there, you'll never guess what happens. Well here we are. Uh, I could run you a bath if you'd like to get more comfortable. I would love that. I remember you and I used to take pasta together. Oh my goodness, Tessa? Tessa. Harden's mother. So not only is Harden's mom meeting Tessa for the first time, but we also come to find out that she doesn't know they broke up in the first place, and for some inexplicable nonsense reason, they can't tell her because that would require a mature adult conversation, and obviously we can't have any of those because this is a teen romance. And so in a shocking plot twist no one ever saw coming, Harden and Tessa have to pretend that they're still together because... I'm just gonna grab a blanket and sleep on the floor. You don't think we could share the bed or not? Do you? Well, I'd like to think that we're not total Neanderthals. <laughs> What? What does that even mean? Anyway, they sleep in the same bed that night, <gasps> and after a few other little adventures, they end up deciding to give their relationship one more try because it worked out so well the first time. Hey Tessa, uh, you know how I have a drinking problem and my reaction to the slightest bit of criticism is completely overblown and then I just brood for like a week and don't even talk to you at all, and then somehow I turn it around and gaslight you until you think you're the one with the problem? Yeah, like what if we just kept on doing that forever? My brain isn't fully formed yet, so I'm gonna say yes. But yeah, so now they're back together again. Do you promise to act like this every day? No. But I'll try. Whatever it takes. <laughs> <laughs> and somehow this all takes up like 60% of the movie. So the first half of the movie is just like and then the second half of the movie is like Yeah, it's a lot. Harden takes Tessa to go see his dad for like Christmas or something and then he's all like time to get grumpy harumph, and goes home to throw some lamps around and listen to his Raycons. Earbuds for the angry emo and all of us. Or then they go to this like party at some frat house or whatever and then of course Harden's old girlfriends are there, one of whom Harden sneaks off with all night and would you believe Tessa's not real thrilled about this and handles it with all the wisdom and maturity of a 19 year old who suddenly has to deal with the results of her own choices. Huh? You just kissed that girl? No, 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 you don't get to cry! And yeah, what did you do, huh? Nothing! The fire truck? Is wrong she with just you. said that she doesn't kiss until- You should know I would never- Fire truck? Cheat on you! Why are you with her tonight? Is she who you disappeared with the whole night? Yes! You're never gonna trust me. Trust you? You think that I should trust you? Yes! Where has that ever gotten me? 
Psh, oh, come on, Tessa. Who doesn't want to be yelling in the front yard of a frat house at one in the morning with eyeliner and mascara running down your face? I mean, it's one of the few things white girls are even good at. Now, in between all of this, Tessa has a few little choice moments with Trevor, who's really the only sensible voice of reason in the entire movie. Well, you know, I don't leave tomorrow. We could still... That's... No, that's stupid. <laughs> Tessa. My sister has struggled with addiction her whole life. This thing between you and Harden, it's not gonna end well. Well, you're wrong. Yeah, Trevor, I'll have you know that I'm a teenage girl who reads books, and being miserable is the only thing that makes me interesting. Anyway, so then Tessa gets hit by a car. But then she's fine. After all this happens, we flash over to see Harden at his mom's place talking about feelings and stuff. Did you hear that Vance was moving to Seattle? Tessa's going too. How did you know? He's having a going away party on Sunday, and I think you should go get her. No, I can't. Can't? Or you don't want to face what you left behind? Mum, I'm not... Pardon? I love you, but you have to start fighting for what really matters. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. What mom would ever give this advice? Hey son, uh, you know what you should do is plan out your entire life around this one girl you met when you were like 20. Yeah, this is definitely how real parents talk. Anyway, so the end of the movie is yet again another party thing, because Vance Publishing is moving to Seattle, which also means that Trevor and Tessa are going as well, because Tessa was just such a gosh darn good intern that now she has a job there, I guess. But as Tessa and Trevor get to talking, we learn an interesting little bit of information that doesn't actually mean anything, but here you go. In the hospital, I answered your cell phone. It was Harden, and I told him to stay away from you. And I do realize that I let my emotions get the best of me, and I'm sorry. Okay. <sighs> Are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't know why this is so funny. Although, to be fair, this is also the same sound I make when anyone ever tries to call me on the phone. But anyway, somehow, of course, Harden shows up at this party to win Tessa back, or whatever he's doing up there, and she sees him and runs out the door. So he follows her outside, and we get the final scene of the movie. I tried. And then she hops in the car, never sees Harden again, because she realizes that she's way better off without him, and Trevor's better in, like, every way possible, so what's even the point, you know what I'm saying? Are you freaking kidding me?! You chose this?! When you could have had this? So once again, just like every teen romance story slash movie since, like, ever, I guess, we have a story of a girl who falls for a bad boy and then realizes that she's in way over her head, and then the universe is like, well, hey, uh, how about this fine young man who's more attractive, has more personality, emotionally mature, has his life going places, you know, he's a real catch? And then the girl's like, what's that? A fun, healthy, stable relationship? Not if I can help it. Now, along with this movie coming out, we also got news that there are two more sequels in the works. Lord, I don't know what I did, but I am sorry. I mean, this is like that one circle of hell that even Dante was like, nope, I ain't going in there. But yeah, so we had after, after we collided, and I guess we'll all just have to reconvene next year for the third entry, after I threw up. Or whatever it's called. Hey, guess what, everybody? I'm in a video game! <laughs> It's on the Android and iOS app stores. It's basically kind of like Candy Crush or Bejeweled or whatever, but it's got all my little dudes in it. And there's 200 levels to get through, so now you have even more excuses to sit in the bathroom for hours at a time avoiding your family slash roommates. It's all free to play, so just head on over to the app store. Links are down below, of course, and just download and start playing right now. Come on. You know, having covered as many of these types of movies as I have now, I mean, gosh, I've done what? To All the Boys 2, Kissing Booth 2, the whole Twilight Saga, Fifty Shades Saga, and now I did, you know, After 2, and like... One thing I've noticed, uh, I mean, I noticed it a while ago, but it's still just reaffirmed now, where it's like the sequel in every single one of these like romance type things. So th they finally end up together, but then it turns out the relationship is really bad and all the red flags are now suddenly still there. You know, they didn't just disappear. And then the girl's like, oh man, this relationship is not that good. It's not at all what I wanted. And then she meets another guy who's better in every way, everything she ever wanted. Okay, it's like just Mr. Perfect for her shows up. And then in the end, she's like, now, you know what? I would rather just hope that my current boyfriend turns into the boy that I want magically one day. Like, that's what I'll wait for. It's such a weird, like, 
message or whatever to send to like teenagers just to be like, you know, like things could be better, but why try? It's such, it's such just like a weird concept. I guess like back when I was in high school, I used to, you know, think like, oh, I fell in love with this girl and she's the one. So we're going to be together forever, even though she didn't even know who I was. But I just saw her like in the back of math class and I was like, that's the girl for me. I guess, I don't know, in a way, I suppose it's kind of like, you know, all of the emotional investment of the first movie in whatever series it is, right? Where it's like, oh, they finally get together at the end. And then like in the sequel, if it's like, oh, and then they break up and someone else, I guess I can kind of see how people would be like upset by that, where it's like, well, but I invested so much time and energy into the first movie. Anyway, thanks for watching everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. I worked pretty hard on it. I think that was a pretty good video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, uh, leave a like and don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to ring that bell so you don't miss any videos from me. Um, I have a podcast out. It's called Doing the Devil's Tango. It's like a dating advice, dating story type of podcast. Um, the link is down below. You can uh, go there. You can subscribe to the podcast channel if you're interested. I have a game on the App Store. If it's Android or iOS, there's a game on the App Store. Link is down below. It's like a Candy Crush type game, but it has, you know, my characters in it and it's all, you know, stuff related videos and my, my little animations. So if you're interested, download it. It's free to play. And above all, to everybody, have a great day and I'll see you all next time.